This is five year mark. What do you want to know? What happened at 10 years, right? Yeah, well that's the one thing that we were never able to find out. At 10 years, I'll just let them explain in their own words what they did. They said the low ratio of the polyunsaturated to saturated fat in diet two, meaning the peanut and coconut oils, was first intended to serve as the control for the study. I emphasize the words first intended. First intended to serve as the control for the study since this pattern closely approximated that of the usual American diet. Well, who wants to guess? At 10 years, was this a control? No. Subsequently, a control group, a new control group, was matched to the diet groups already under study. We are fully aware that by continuing to study the original diet groups, we made it impossible to have a randomized control series. Meaning, it is now impossible for them to infer cause and effect from their very well-designed, initially well-designed study. Despite continuation of the two dietary fat patterns, meaning despite the fact that they continued to eat these same diets for 10 years, the data from the two dietary groups were combined before comparison with the data from the control group. So they merged the two diet groups together and they compared them to a new control group that didn't get any advice at all that they pulled out of thin air. As it so happens, in this comparison, the groups that had originally been in the study had 17% lower mortality than this new control group uh, that they pulled out of thin air, and they concluded that being in their study was good for you. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't know anything beyond that. The Medical Research Council study found no effect of replacing uh, the ordinary diet, which was largely uh, based on animal fat with soybean oil. There was a possible confounder here where the diet, uh, the control diet, the subjects just ate what they would ordinarily have eaten. And in the soy oil diet, they were given a bunch of soybean oil and they were saying, they told them you have to use half of this unheated. So oftentimes they were drinking the soy oil and chasing it down with fruit juice, which doesn't sound very appetizing, but you know, it's, there's, it probably introduced other confounders like lower levels of heat damage and so on in this diet. So it's, it's not a very well controlled uh, study, but regardless of the confounders, there was no effect Anyway, I think we should pay special attention to two double-blind studies, the Minnesota Coronary Survey and the LA Veterans Administration Hospital Study. Uh, these are the two, only two double-blind studies replacing vegetable oils with uh, an, uh, replacing animal fats with vegetable oils and not making any other changes. In both of these studies, they studied inpatients in their hospitals, so they were able to keep the diets completely controlled in every respect except the change in the type of fat. And they were able to monitor compliance either with barcoded tickets or color-coded tickets that uh, told them which dining hall to go to or which meal to get. They could collect the tickets, punch a hole, and then they knew who was eating what. So by, out of all of these studies, these two are by far the most well-controlled and the most informative. The Minnesota Coronary Survey had some strengths and limitations. Its strength was that it was very large. It had over 9,000 people in it. It was the only study to include women in it, and there were about half the patients were women. Uh, the limitation was that it was very short. Even though it was carried on for about four and a half years, people were constantly coming into the study and leaving, so that overall, all the people in the study were only on the diets for about one year's time, which isn't very long. And you can see from this graph that there was no difference between the high PUFA diet and the low PUFA diet in uh, the incidence of heart disease. But if we look at the survival curves, we can see something a little bit disturbing. On the left, you see the cardiovascular disease free survival, and you can see that these two lines basically mesh with one another. There's no difference corroborating the graph that we just looked at. But on the right, you see there's no statistically significant difference, but you can see that after about a year and a half, when there's a substantial number of people who have been on these diets for at least a year, the lines do begin to uh, emerge from one another. And you can see the, the dotted line on the top, which is the saturated fat diet, and the PUFA line on the bottom, which is the solid line. And you can see that these begin to diverge from one, ano one another so that there seems to be better survival among the people eating the saturated fat diet. Now, this, the y-axis starts around 80 or 90 percent, so this makes it look like everyone's dying, but really only about 20 percent of the people are dying. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, so this difference is pretty small, but it makes us wonder 
what would have happened if these people were on this diet for two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, and so on? And we're never going to know that in this study, but we can get an inkling of what may have happened by looking at the results of the LA Veterans Administration Hospital study. And this was the other of the two double-blind studies, and it is the longest trial lasting over eight years, with most of the subjects being followed for over six years. This is very informative. It was also the only trial where the mean age was over 60. And what does that help us uh, look at? What disease can we see, get a better, better idea of there? Cancer, right? So this is especially interesting to study cancer. The design was they took 850 patients, randomly allocated them to one of two dining halls. In dining hall A, they uh, ate butter and other animal fats. Uh, they ate a small amount of hydrogenated vegetable oils as well. Dining hall B, they had one egg per day, uh, and they had a mix of different vegetable oils. If we take a superficial analysis of this study, it seems that uh, the vegetable oil diet reduced the risk of heart disease but increased the risk of other diseases. We're going to criticize that finding in a couple minutes. Uh, but that, that is what appears to be the case at first glance. And if we look at the total survival curve, we can see that they basically line up with one another. There is a slight divergence that seems to favor the saturated fat group at the end of the study, uh, but it only goes on for about three months, and you, we really can't conclude anything without seeing a study go on for longer. But we'll come back to this, because there are some reasons to wonder about it. But we have to wonder, so what was this increase in non-cardiovascular mortality? Well, if we look at the cancer curve, we can see that for the first two years of the study, there was no difference in cancer. But after that, two to, in the two to five year range, we start to see the lines uh, diverge from one another. So that there's a higher incidence of cancer on the vegetable oil diet. And we see that after the six or seven year mark, this difference gets much larger. So that's very concerning because this is the only trial that tested vegetable oils in populations that were old enough to get cancer, and this provides some pretty strong evidence that they might cause cancer. But if we, cancer was only about half of the non-cardiovascular causes, and if we just look at the survival curves for all non-cardiovascular mortality, we see that the uh, difference begins to emerge after about four years. But it's really not until the seventh year that more t uh, survival in the vegetable oil group really starts dropping off a cliff. And this is really disconcerting because it suggests that we may not see the true effects of vegetable oils unless the study is more than seven years long, which does not describe many of these studies. Beyond that, it makes us wonder, well, if this rapid falling off a cliff of survival in the vegetable oil group didn't occur until seven years, is this little divergence in total mortality after the eight-year mark something real? And what would have happened to total mortality if we carried it on for 9, 10, 11, 12 years? Uh, we don't know the answer to that. But the, but the last few graphs make us wonder, and the, you know, it doesn't look very good for the vegetable oil group.